Mina, Kanbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Coming at you with 1 Chronicles chapter 16, starting in verse 1. So they brought the ark of God and set it in the midst of the tabernacle that David had erected for it. Then they offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before God. And when David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Then he distributed to every one of Israel, both man and woman, to every one, a loaf of bread, a piece of meat, and a cake of raisins. And then skip down to verse 6. Um, well, starting in verse 4, And he appointed some of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord. And then in verse 6, Benaiah and Jehaziel, the priests, regularly blew the trumpets before the ark of the covenant of God. So, and the verses in between those two basically list a bunch of other people that had other duties before the ark of the Lord. All of this to say, kind of what I was referring to the other day, it really does look like the ark of God was open air in front of all the people, and multiple people stood before the ark of the Lord. You had the priests ministering um, right in front of the ark. You had priests um, singing music and um, and playing instruments, blowing the trumpets, um, with strained instruments and harps, music with cymbals, all these things right before the Ark of God, like right there out in the open. And it just makes me think, you know, maybe some of the stuff that I've heard amongst my charismatic brethren, maybe that's true. It, it really, did, from what I can read, from what I can tell, I'd like to know a little bit more about the history and culture, but it really does look like the Ark was just open air. No holy of holies or holy place, just a giant open meeting place where everyone could worship God freely and openly, offer their sacrifices while getting essentially a musical worship service in. And of course, David, he wrote plenty of psalms. Uh, he instituted lots and lots of singing and worship for the Israelites. Well, maybe instituted isn't the right word, but it's not spoken of very strongly or regularly prior to David. And then, you know, the book of Psalms, all of a sudden, boom, the biggest book in the entire Old Testament. In fact, the entire Bible. And it's written by David. And I, cohorts isn't the right word. Minions is even less of a word. But the people associated with him, the people that, the Levites that he entrusted with the worship, Asaph was mentioned. You see David and Asaph and other people people that knew David, a lot of these people are mentioned in the Psalms. They comprise, I would say, I haven't, I don't have a number in mind, I didn't study this before doing this message, but I would say over half, the bulk, the majority of the Psalms are by David or associates of his. So he really does seem to be the one who kick-started worship, and it was in an open-air environment where there was the ark. And for the Israelites, there was God. Not that the ark was God or the ark was worshiped, but that God's presence, he dwelt between the wings of the cherubim on the ark. So he was seated there above the law, um, above the Ten Commandments, above uh, Moses' budding rod, above the manna. Or I should actually, I'm sorry, that was Aaron's budding rod. I apologize for that. There it was. Right there in front of everybody. That is such a cool thought to think. That even in the Old Testament, there was a time when, boom, there was God. Right there, not hidden behind a bunch of veils, just openly worshipped by anyone and everyone who, I'm sure they still instituted the rules of who could come to the, to the house of the Lord. Um, at the time when they studied how to carry the Ark of the Covenant, as I covered, it, covered in yesterday's message, I'm sure they looked up the other rules and brushed up on those laws as well. So it's not that literally anyone could come before the Lord. There were those with um, like leprosy, etc., various sores, various wounds. They weren't allowed into the tabernacle of meaning because of uncleanness. But so much more open than it was in Moses' time. Not that David was being irreverent. It was just that David had a passion for God. He loved God. And he wanted to get the Israelites in on that love and on that relationship. And that is... So precious. It's so beautiful. You know, if I can if I can get just some people's attention through my YouTube ministry, and this is a ministry. I'm I'm preaching the word of God. I'm giving my thoughts forth 
on the Bible. So this is this is ministry. Despite the video game videos being on top of this, or rather with them, co co joined with them. I'm one person. I love video games. I don't mind swearing. I think that's more of a church thing than a Bible thing. And and here's the word of God. As one person, I am coming to y'all and I'm saying, hey, let's come to God together. Let's worship the Lord Jesus together. And if you don't know him, please come to know him. He's a great guy. And so it's, just, it's great to see that kind of thing in the Old Testament. I, really, I would like to believe that I'm reading this and understanding this correctly and that that's what happened at this time. That Again, my charismatic brethren have told me correctly about this and that there was a time when the Ark of the Covenant and God's very presence was just right there in the middle of Israel. That's so cool to think about. Just a passion for God and the heart of the king. He's passing that along to the people. Forget all those other gods. Forget all those idols. You read, uh, you read the psalm that follows in that chapter. And he's like, yeah, the idols of the nations are worthless. You are God of all the earth, of all the heavens, from everlasting to everlasting. You're God. It's so cool. I, just, I love it. I absolutely love the Tabernacle of David and everything that it stood for, especially with the thought that I threw in several days ago about there were literally ministers before the Ark of the Covenant and in the Tabernacle of David day and night, round the clock. It's just so cool to think about. So hopefully I'm interpreting this correctly. Let me know in the comments down below if you think I've got it right, if you think I've got it wrong, if you have some history to confirm or disprove what I've said. That'd be great if anyone has done that research. And thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you. God bless.